not too much too high, or where one was told, well, the reason we have to do this is because there are enemies who are fighting to destroy Scientology, and yet one might not have seen any instance of that, but you could say, who am I to say? Maybe I just haven't run into them yet. Maybe they exist somewhere else on the planet, or off the planet. <laughs> Or maybe on some other time track. <laughs> or maybe they're simply uh, part of an engram. <laughs> Had they been handled as part of somebody's engram and run out, we might be in a very different situation today. Anyway, under circumstances like that, the point I'm trying to make is that it's very easy to make a small compromise of one's integrity or to accept a small untruth in order to gain something much more important or a much bigger truth. Unfortunately, I feel that that's a trap because it's the small instances of losing one's integrity, and I say that with somewhat with tongue in cheek because one doesn't actually lose one's integrity, one tends to uh, one does an act of irresponsibility to cast away one's integrity. But it's small instances where one gives up one's integrity for some other reason. Those are the things which add up to becoming the effect of and subject to further suppression or oppression in the future and further losses of integrity. So really, the answer that I'm putting forward is that the solution to this sort of thing is to seek to maintain one's integrity in the present and from day to day and moment to moment during one's life. Now that's a very high thing to ask for because none of us, myself included, has reached that level yet. But it is possible to strive for an increase in integrity from day to day And when one spots instances where one has compromised one's integrity to do what's necessary to regain it. The only thing that one has to lose in such instances is some embarrassment that one earlier made a wrong decision. A very small price to pay for increased enlightenment. Now I think it goes a lot more basic than this too. <coughs> We're all familiar that there are eight dynamics and that the seventh and eighth dynamics possibly seem less tangible than some of the other dynamics. The seventh dynamic relates to beings and things related to beings. Sometimes it's described as, as aesthetics belonging on the seventh dynamic, although I think it's a lot easier and perhaps a lot workable and maybe basically a lot more true to consider that the seventh dynamic actually relates to beings simply as spiritual beings, including oneself and, of course, without excluding one's fellow man. There are some things which have happened which I feel tended to negate that very basic idea. One of them is what I'll refer to as the depersonalization of persons. Um, I could uh, use myself as a famous example of this in that when I fell from grace or when I chose to leave depending on which side you look at it from, I ceased to be a person in some of the published literature, such as the SP Declare or the other famous document, The Story of a Squirrel. Instead of that, I ceased, I ceased to be described as a person and became described or was described as a squirrel or um, an alterer of tech or somebody with bad motives. But the description ceased to regard me as a person. 
Now, I'm using that simply as an example because I've seen it happen to a very large number of other people. Every time I've seen somebody declared, and I mean declared an SP, the person was no longer regarded as an individual or as a person or as a being. Instead, there was a depersonalization that occurred and I'm using that word, although it may be difficult to follow my next statement, because what happened after that was the person was made into a personification of some aspect of evil. Either way you look at it, there's a disregard of the person as an individual and an effort to move them into some abstract, some abstract quality usually a negative abstract quality under these circumstances. And that in itself is an error. Now we could make the same error by saying, well what's wrong is, or what went wrong, we could say, is the management, which is an abstraction. And I don't feel that that is actually what went wrong. I feel that anything that went wrong with the management was late in the sequence of things. I think the seeds of it were already present or the cause of it was already present long before. And if it were simply the fault of a group of people called the management, our saying that might have brought about some betterment of the condition. And it certainly wasn't that. Um, that's an example of how we could make the same error now by depersonalizing what the cause of the trouble was. So I don't think that's the answer. I mentioned the seventh dynamic because I think that a way to guard against this in the future, and I feel it's very workable and therefore can give hope, is that we regard people as beings, as individuals and as beings, not as SPs or PTSs or people who've bought the enemy line or any such label. If you regard the person as a real person, then it's possible to get into communication with them and find out what happened that caused that person to act in a way that one might not agree with or that might be puzzled about. And it's very easy then to use communication as a solvent. Now I'd like to go on, move on to the eighth dynamic. And here I'm going to break some new territory because I feel that in the past we've tended to accept an idea that we don't need to worry about what the eighth dynamic is and what it consists of. Certainly not at the, in the present. It's been delegated an area of lower importance. Yes, there are statements which state um, various things about the eighth dynamic in various materials, including LRH's statements, and I'm sure you've heard many discussions from other Scientologists, all of which are part of your data experience on the subject. And these range from the idea that the eighth dynamic is a supreme being, or the supreme being, or the possibility of supreme beings, to infinity, to a much less tangible idea that the eighth dynamic might encompass whatever it is that isn't encompassed in the previous seven dynamics. And I feel that this is a negation of the idea of an eighth dynamic. If we talk about something, but talk about it in that fashion, I think we're negating it and failing to face up to the question of does it exist or not. Of course, this gets into the subject of what does one believe, personal beliefs. And we could say that it's up to the individual to formulate his own personal beliefs. And I hold that to be true. On the other hand, I don't think it's any different 